Hey, and thanks for joining us today on 2020 Flight Simmers. My name is John, and I'm the voice behind all those videos you've been seeing recently. So if this is your first time joining us on the channel, I would love to welcome you and suggest you go down there and hit that subscribe button, tick that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It really helps out the channel, and this way you won't miss any of our future videos. So on today's video, I really want to go over flight simming setups, ways that you can improve yours. Also, a lot of 3D printed items. If you got a Honeycomb Bravo throttle quadrant, then you really don't want to miss this. I've got a cool add-on from Flat Modster. But uh, we're going to show you all that and more coming up next, right here on 2020 Flight Simmers. All right, so let's get right to it, and first I'll show you an overview of what I've got to work with, and then we're going to go through each item individually. Let's turn you around and show you what we got. Down here is my whole flight simming setup. As you'll notice, one of the things that I made to uh, make this thing modular, so when I want to do some work, what I did was I put everything on this uh, plywood box that I made here. And uh, I think it's only made out of half inch plywood to keep it light. Uh, this way, when I want to use my computer for work, all I have to do is pull this whole setup out and uh, go to right to town. So we'll start at the bottom down here. Uh, these are the Thrustmaster uh, TPR Pendulum uh, rudder pedals. Excellent, excellent. There's a bunch of different customization. You can adjust the way the brakes are on the pedals, meaning uh, if you want your pedals more upright, if you want them more flat, you can adjust them however you want it. It's an excellent setup. I started out with the Logitech rudder pedals, and one of the things, uh, problems that people were having with them is the cable inside of the pedal would snap, and then your plane would pull to one side all the time. So I kind of got rid of them before I had that problem. Uh, then we're going to go here on the left, and let's talk about this. So right here is my stream deck. This is an awesome companion for your flight simming adventure. Uh, all Everything, all my main programs here, I have put on the front screen of this. So if I want to open any uh, particular program like ChartFox, SimBrief, SkyVector, LittleNavMap, I can open everything from here, also Pilot Edge. And then when I'm getting ready to fly, I can hit my plane menu and then pick which plane that I'm going to be flying that day. In that menu, you can set up a lot of different things. You can set up different views for different landings. You can set up different things for your fuel. You can set up for your ATC menus. Uh, so this thing is a really handy uh, piece of kit. Uh, I will try to put a link in the description of the program that's running behind the Stream Deck to allow this to happen. One of the other programs that's an awesome add-on to this is the Moby Flight for the Garmin. So if you're in the Cessna, and instead of having to use all them little knobs that are on the screen that you got to use your mouse to twiddle around with, uh, I can go right down here and hit my MFD autopilot button and I can adjust all of my settings right here instead of having to go on the screen. So I can use my knobs just as I would on the screen right here, go through my different menus right here. It's really handy. Also, one of the things you're going to notice is what the Stream Deck is actually sitting on here. So, let me move that out of the way. This is a uh, 3D printed platform that I designed and made so that it would sit right on the side of my wooden cabinet here. The Stream Deck actually fits right inside the little ledge here. So it doesn't go anywhere, it stays put, and uh, really it's on a perfect angle. Uh, and that's one of the other things, I didn't want it straight on, I wanted it angled so that it was kind of like you're in a cockpit. So the next thing uh, that we're going to go to is the uh, honeycomb yoke. Uh, this honeycomb yoke is fantastic. If you haven't used one yet, this thing is amazing. It can go a full 90 degree turn. It really has great resistance uh, when you're pushing in or pulling out on the yoke. Uh, it, it returns to center as it should. All the different buttons on here work fantastically. Um, I really can't say enough for it. There's so many different options that you can use to program these switches up top here. You know, you have two up and down switches here that you can program each switch up and down, and then you can program both switches together up and down. So that, that gives you one, two, three, four, five, six different um, view settings you can use from this. And that's what I like to use with this, or the hat switch, uh, is for a lot of my views. It's fantastic. So the next thing uh, that I'm going to go to is the actual mouse that I use. So I found instead of using a traditional mouse that you have to move all over the place, 
uh, on your desktop, it is much, much easier and much more efficient for me to use a trackball mouse. I believe this is the Logitech MX series, the ergonomic uh, design, so you can actually set it uh, different ways and different, uh, different angles if you'd like. Now, the reason why I love this mouse, one, you don't have to move it all over the place, two, it's ergonomically designed for you, and uh, three, if you have a Mac or just two different computer systems, has a switch right here on it so that you can easily swap between your different operating systems or different computers for different settings that you may have set on this mouse. So that Logitech mouse is really a lifesaver. Now one of the things you're going to notice is this little platform that I have built onto the side of this uh, cabinet here, uh, so to speak. Well, I'll, I'll call it the cockpit. So you'll notice this uh, platform here that I have 3D printed and mounted to the cockpit area. So the reason why I did this and why this is so helpful is because when you have it here and you're in a proper position to fly, your arm has to be kind of fully extended and not rested. And it really takes a toll on your shoulder. I have rotator cuff issues, so it starts making my shoulder feel a little funky. By having this platform here, I'm able to now rest my arm on the actual armrest of the chair and then come right down on it and it's so much nicer i don't have to move my hand and then right off to the right of that i can go right to my trim wheel on my honeycomb bravo throttle quadrant so this is the next thing uh in the list here and let me tell you something this takes a place of a lot of different things you have all your different autopilot settings at the top. You have a bunch of different mappable switches here that you can use for on off. And you can take off each of these knobs here and put whatever setup that you want on it. So, for instance, if you decide that you want to use a commercial setup for today, go ahead and swap all the commercial handles on it for you. The One of the cool things that I wanted to show you about this is these. So these are 3D printed. The plans came from flapmodsters.com, I believe. I'll put the link down in the description so you can get that. Uh, this actually, let me show you here. Let's, let's take off these handles just so you can see a little better. So what these do is this allows you to use this one slot here that's really not being used when you're using single or double engine planes uh, and there's a slot on the bottom here again these are modified from the original file so they look a little bit different from the original I made these a little bit easier to print um, but the design still works on their website so uh, this kind of fits right over top this hole will fit right over top of this and then it just kind of pushes right down in the place now they have these from uh, three three position all the way up to nine position I think even more and they're for X-Plane, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Prepared 3D um, so pretty much all of them and then what you'll do then there's another cool little piece here this little piece will slide right over top of the flap handle and then goes right down over that like that then instead of having to look down at your gauges to see where your flaps are or you know try to guess you can come right here and go, well, it's, it's in position. I know I'm in flat position two. I know I'm in flat position three and so on. So it's really nice. Let's get a close up of this thing and how it works. So if you haven't seen these yet and you have a honeycomb Bravo throttle quadrant, head on over to flat monster and check these out. There's a lot of people that are 3d printing these for you. Um, it's a free file to download, so if you have a 3D printer, go ahead and uh, download these, and uh, you're going to really enjoy your flight simming experience that much more. So, the last things that we're going to talk about are the displays. So, this is a, uh, I believe it's a 32 or 34 inch 2K monitor, 2560 by 1440, and then I have a 28 inch monitor over here, and I use this for mainly all of my flight planning. Uh, sim brief sky vector and then I can kind of use that for when I'm flying 
All right, so the next thing that I designed and I 3D printed was this little stand. And I made it customizable so that I can, it's modular. So all I have to do is separate the top from the bottom if I wanted a longer stand or a shorter stand. So what I use these for are for my tablets that I would sit right in there. And I actually have one on this side and one that will go on this side. But because I'm right now doing some tutorial videos and I really want to show people what's going on on the screen, I'm not using these uh, for right now. But these come in very good handy when you need to display your pilot and co-pilot information on these uh, tablets here. So go ahead and pick yourself up some 10 inch tablets. I'm also using Space Desk for the uh, interface to uh, mirror that screen. There's also another great uh, program. Uh, it's called Super super display and anyway, i think it's called super display or something like that so if you just go to the app store super display unlike space desk is a wired application so if you're having problems with your tablet dropping out go ahead and try the uh, super display and that's a wired application the only problem is you can only have one device at a time so if you're only using one tablet hey it's right up your alley i would suggest that one over space desk but if you've got two or more, Space Desk is probably the way to go. But like I said, unfortunately, I have dropouts every once in a while, and sometimes it can play havoc on me. Now, I don't know if they've updated the drivers, and that may have changed. But uh, at this point, like I said, I'm not really using it because I'm doing more tutorial videos on the big screens. And right up here, I've also got my Track IR on my headset. And the Track IR is right up here on the main monitor. So track IR is very helpful when you're flight simming um, because it allows you to really look around that cockpit and get that uh, three-dimensional picture like you're actually sitting there, similar to virtual reality. The last thing on the list that I have is the big beast down here, and I shouldn't say it's a big beast. This is my uh, computer that's running the whole thing. I mainly run just Microsoft Flight Simulator on it. Uh, it's an i7-8700 non-K model, so I think I only get about 4.3 gigahertz. But I'm running some 3600 megahertz overclocked RAM inside, running clock speeds of 15, 16, 16, and 32, I believe. So it's very tight clocks on it. Um, and I'm running 32 gigs of RAM, 1 terabyte SSD hard drive. Well, it's a 1 terabyte SSD for storage. What else? Oh! And the graphics card is a RTX 3060 Ti, which some of you may have seen in my previous videos. So, that's my whole setup here. Alright everybody, so that was my whole setup. I hope you enjoyed the video. If anybody has any questions, go ahead and pop them down below. Again, please like, share, and subscribe the video to your friends. Oh, and if you have any suggestions, go ahead and put them down in the comments below as well. I'm always up for new suggestions, and uh, I love to try different things. So, as always, all you 2020 flight simmers, keep the blue side up. We'll see you on the next one.